But you can see everything looks great and the air quality is in that good range. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the EG air quality detector. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here, walking us through some of the product tech specs. So check that out. You can see the advertised features right there. So everything looks great. Obviously we have a nice color LCD display and it's gonna track a lot of different air pollutants and quality metrics for us. So now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see we have our user guide and manual right here, walking us through product features, a nice introduction to it, all the different controls and options that we have, how to measure air quality and calibrate everything so you can see that right here and it's going to walk you through different questions you may have and to have better understanding of all the different measurements especially as you can see right here where they're talking about pm 2.5 and then we can go ahead we can keep looking here and they're going to walk you through conversions how to record and then we have some system settings and then you can see on the back, we have how to charge instructions. So charging time is four hours. And then we have some technical parameters on the back that may be of importance to you, depending on what you're trying to measure. Then you can see we have a USB type A to micro USB charging cable. And last but not least, you can see we have our detector right here. Check it out. Front and center, you can see our nice big display all of our buttons and controls, the EG logo and branding. Here it is from the right side, you can see our micro USB charging port. Here it is from the back side, we have a QC pass sticker. Here it is from the left side, we have our on and off button. And then here it is from the top, and here it is from the bottom. And again, you can see the back side right here. So it's gonna fit comfortably in your hand, as you can see, it fits comfortably in mine. Now let's go ahead, let's power it on and look at the menu. So you can see I have the device powered on right now and everything looks great. It's gonna take three minutes for the device to populate our TVOC levels right there. It should just say wait while everything is starting up. I haven't calibrated this yet for the first time, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take it outside to calibrate. But basically after you get the wait text to go away and have it start taking measurements. You're gonna place this in a clean outdoor air environment for five to 10 minutes. And then, only then after there is, you know, negligible amounts of formaldehyde or TVOC, then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna press the C button. So you can see that's gonna be for our calibrate right there. We're gonna press it once to enter the calibration menu and then press the A button to start allow the countdown to drop to zero seconds, then press the D button to finish. After the calibration, you will see the device has set the HCHO and TVOC readings to zero, and you can confirm the device has been calibrated, and you're all set and ready to go to start using the device. So that's what we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do those steps right now. So now we have our device calibrated, you can see the results that we're getting right here. So first thing I wanted to test with you guys was the temperature and humidity. So I have a humidity meter and temperature gauge right here. We're showing a current temperature of 76.7 degrees Fahrenheit in the studio, where our EG device is showing 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now keep in mind, this device went all the way up to 89 degrees Fahrenheit because I had it outside during the calibration process. So that may be why it's tending to be a little bit warmer still. In regards to the humidity, they're fluctuating between 38 and 40%, which is what we're getting right here as well, 39. 239 even somewhere right around there and you can see now we're at 37 but and now it's up to 39 so you can get a feel for what we're dealing with in regards to the humidity they both seem very accurate at least to each other in their internal sensors so that's going to be a pretty realistic indicator of what's going on in our room in regards to temperature and humidity. Now let's go over some more of the device settings. So at the bottom of our device, you can see all the different menu options that we have right here. So first up, we have our real-time option. We can select A, 
and that's going to take us into our real time measurements and results right here and we can choose a b c or d depending on what we're trying to monitor and you can see we'll get the nice charts for each one right so let's go ahead let's do c and then d and you can see we have the real time charting so let's stick with hcho and you can see we have start, stop, quick, and slow. So if we push the start button, obviously it's going to continue with our charting. Stop is going to stop the charting. And the chart is for the last 200 seconds. Let's go back. Let's start it back up again. Then we have the quick option. It's going to chart every second. Or the slow option is going to chart every three seconds. So that's the controls right there. Let's go look at the temperature one now. Let's go back and let's look at our TVOC. And then let's go ahead, let's look at our last one, the PM 2.5. So you can see the charting right there. Let's go back into our main menu and then you can see we have the record option. So we can select that and you can see the options we have for recording at the bottom. You can choose to record it however you see fit. Keep in mind, it's going to be our time left. Four minutes, 10 seconds is going to be our minimum. And we have a maximum time to record of 16 hours and 40 minutes. And you can tweak those settings right there for the record options that you want. So we can do start, pause. Let's select chart really quick so you can see the chart. There's our chart. And then let's go back and then you can see the detail option right here too. So you can get a feel for those menu settings. Let's go back. Let's go back again. Then you can see we have the calibration settings. Here's what I did outside. So you can see how you're able to configure that right here. Don't do it indoors, do it outdoors. And then we have our settings. That's the last button, the D button right there. You can see the different settings that we have a lot of different options down here. So we can turn the screen off, shut down, work speed, brightness, factory set, temperature. I mean, you have a lot of different options there that you're able to configure. We can go down with the nice little arrow key. So it's very easy to use and navigate with the controls that we have. Next, you can see we have our sensor options right here. So if we, for some reason, know the exact level of something, we're able to precisely calibrate it right here. So you can see the different margins we have to work with. So if you know a precise level and this is not showing within that range, you can calibrate it directly yourself, manually adjust it as needed. Let's go back. So here we go. Then we can see our time option. We can adjust the date and time. So we can do that. Then we have our multiply option. So you can see the different settings we have right here. So we have so many different options to go over. Let's go ahead, let's select our first option, the tree. So you can see our HCHO calculator right here. And we can do all of those different options. We can calculate it depending on room area, room type, density, so many options. Then we have our treat haze, same thing. You can see the calculator right there. Then we can go back. We have our calibration settings. So we already looked at that earlier, but there it is again from this menu. And then we have our alarm settings at the bottom. So we can select that and you can see we can adjust our alarm levels depending on what we're measuring for. So you can see we can adjust that and turn it on or off and adjust the tone for it. Let's go back. And I wanted to show you we also have the about button that we can press where we can learn more about our device, serial number, version, all of that good stuff right there. So that's gonna be in your menu settings. A lot of options there for you to control, a lot of device settings, and then we can go back to the main menu as well. Now let's go ahead, let's try this out in a couple of different rooms. First up, I'm in a nursery and you can see the results that we're getting right here. And we're comparing at least the humidity and the temperature to what we're getting with our EG device. So check that out. Everything passes. We have the good in the smiley face and we're showing green for all the key measurements. And you can see our temperature, 78 degrees versus 77. 
and our humidity is identical between both devices. So now you can see the results in the basement right here. So check it out, we're showing 38% humidity versus the 36.8 on our humidity meter, and that's fluctuating. Then you can see temperature, we're showing 77 degrees versus 75.2 degrees for our humidity meter. But that's the results in the basement right here. They're pretty accurate to each other for the most part. And you can see our air quality is good down here as well. Last but not least, we're outside now and you can see the results right here. So air quality is great today. It's a beautiful evening here. We're showing 38% humidity versus 37.42 outside. 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're showing 78 degrees Fahrenheit as well. So definitely getting great measurements outside that are near identical to our second meter. But you can see everything looks great and the air quality is in that good range. So let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the EG. For this review, I don't have a sample or a way to guarantee the accuracy of this device. For my use case, it's gonna be good enough just to have around the house and to use it to review some air purifiers here on the channel to try to measure any sort of improvements that we get. Now, with that being said, consult with the professional that has the tools and the means to provide you with accuracy readings in regards to this specific device and your air quality. In regards to the temperature and humidity, I thought it was accurate enough compared to the other meter I was using and I used it with my dehumidifier downstairs. My only thought along those lines is it just doesn't seem to process and change as fast is that handheld meter that I had. So it's taking a little bit longer to process the environment and the room. But overall, the screen is fantastic. Really pleased with the screen. Super easy to navigate everything. And thanks to the color coding and the smiley face, it's really easy to know right from looking at it what is acceptable, good, that sort of thing in regards to your air quality. So I really like the simplicity of it. It takes something super complex and it makes it as simple as looking for the correct color or a smiley face to know if you're all set and ready to go. Other than that, I think the only improvement I'd wanna make would be to the battery life. I'd love to have an option of AA, AAA, something on those lines so you can always have enough power readily available. And I would like to see that internal fan blower, whatever you wanna call it, run even quieter in the future. This does make some noise when you're using it. It's not too loud or anything like that, but it is noticeable. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.